What is BBT or basal body temperature? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. Today I wanna to talk about cycle tracking or natural fertility methods or awareness or family planning. And one of these ways has gotten a lot of attention recently. And this is BBT or basal body temperature or temperature tracking. This channel exists to help give you information about your fertility in your body. So I would love it if you would subscribe and follow along. In order to understand basal body temperature, you have to understand your body and ovulation. Number one, big red flag with a lot of these methods, and you can use BBT to get pregnant or to prevent pregnancy, and that's considered like natural family planning. But regardless is that if you do not have regular cycles, this is not going to be an effective method for you either way, because if you are not consistently ovulating, this is going to be extremely difficult. So let's just review what happens normally, and then I'll talk about what BBT is, how you check it, limitations about when it won't work, and what you should know about wearable devices. So when you think about ovulation, you need to think about what happens in the body. So let's just imagine real quickly, we've got our ovary. Inside our ovary, we have a bunch of eggs and each egg grows inside a follicle. At the start of one month, there are a bunch of follicles that have become available that month. I like to think about them being released from a small vault in the ovary. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, well-named hormone that works to stimulate a follicle to grow. As that follicle is growing, the egg is maturing and making estrogen. This is the follicular phase, well-named, because you have follicle growing, follicle stimulating hormone is coming from the brain, and estrogen is the main hormone in the body. In the follicular phase, you may notice you have like more energy. This is because of the estrogen component. There is no progesterone around. Once the brain has seen a high enough level of estrogen, which comes from a mature follicle, 200 picograms per milliliter for 50 hours. So it's a very specific amount. The brain will then say, hey, we must have a mature egg. And now I'm going to send out an LH surge. This is a one-time surge of LH. This is what you're detecting with an ovulation predictor kit. And I have a whole video on that. Now, the LH surge causes the follicle that is housing the egg in it to rupture. So the cyst ruptures and the egg is released. That is ovulation. That happens approximately 24 to 36 hours after the LH surge. So LH surge, follicle ruptures, egg is released. After the egg is released, it lives in the body for about 24 hours. You have the chance to get it fertilized. The cyst, so the follicle that grew the egg, that cyst reforms and now it becomes a corpus luteum. And that corpus luteum makes progesterone, which is essential to getting pregnant. And that progesterone is produced based on LH pulses from the brain. So if we can imagine the brain sends out this one big surge of LH, and then it's gonna pulse up and down the rest of the luteal phase. And so that corpus luteum is going to respond to those pulses and make progesterone in accordance up and down. So your progesterone levels anywhere after you ovulate could be anywhere from three to 40 nanograms, and it's all showing that you ovulated. Remember that there's no progesterone level that's better than another one because it just depends on where you're checking in this peak or trough association. Once you get pregnant, that pregnancy that implants is now going to make HCG. And HCG, which is the pregnancy hormone that you detect on a pregnancy test, stimulates constant progesterone production. So now you have a much higher increase in progesterone. If you do not get pregnant, that corpus luteum can only make progesterone for about 12 to 14 days. So we'll say two weeks then it's going to die. It is going to collapse on itself, it is going to die, and your progesterone will drop, and that is the signal to the body that you're going to have a period. So that is what's happening month to month when you're trying to get pregnant. Now the interesting thing is when you have that corpus luteum, this is now known as the luteal phase. And in the luteal phase, the corpus luteum is making progesterone. Progesterone, again, essential for implantation, it opens and closes that implantation window. So 
Progesterone causes a lot of the symptoms we don't love about the luteal phase or early pregnancy. It can cause bloating, fatigue, nausea, sore breasts, a bunch of things. And one thing that progesterone also does is it elevates your body temperature. So what we expect is if you are checking your basal, like your core body temperature early in the morning, it will raise from 0.5 to a full degree Celsius after progesterone is being made. So that's the premise of basal body temperature is I'm going to check my temperature to determine when I see an increase associated with the production of progesterone. So it is a way to detect that your body is making progesterone. If you're not pregnant, then that temperature will drop and then you'll get your period. And if you are pregnant, you will see that temperature usually continue to rise because there's an increase in progesterone production. So what we tend to see is if you're checking your temperature in the follicular phase, that your normal temp would be 97.0 to 97.5 before ovulation and after ovulation 97.6 to 98.6 if we're talking in Fahrenheit which most of us do so you do see a bump now it's subtle and there are so many things that are like nuanced about checking basal body temperature in fact original articles and this one was back from before I was born say basal body temperature is worthless it's too hard to use and it's not going to be correlated with anything we know that it actually can be a helpful measurement but you have to be very diligent about how you're checking it and technology has actually made this easier. So the original way to check your basal body temperature is to use a thermometer that measures in very small degree. So you need a 10th of a degree measurement. These typically would be marketed when say like basal temperature or basal thermometer on the packaging. You need to take your temperature as soon as you wake up, before you get out of bed, before you have water or coffee or go to the bathroom you need to be waking up at the same time every day. So you'd be putting that thermometer in your mouth, recording the temperature at the same time every day. And everybody is a little bit different when it comes to your temperature, but if you are charting this and OGs would chart it on graph paper, you would see an actual rise in your temperature. And then you'd be able to say, okay, now I know that I have ovulated a couple days ago. So it is telling you that you did in fact ovulate a few days ago. It is not telling you that ovulation has happened one of the issues with this is you can't then time pregnancy in that cycle because the egg only lives for 24 hours and by the time your progesterone rises the egg is well and gone so it's not helpful in one cycle to get pregnant it can tell you you did ovulate and if you have regular cycles you can apply that knowledge oh my temperature usually rises on day 16 Therefore, I know my most fertile days are probably going to be, you know, days 11 to 15 of the cycle because I ovulated a couple days before that day 16 rise, but it is an imprecise measurement in one cycle. So yeah, I ovulated here, but when exactly did I ovulate? You can start to detect that by walking it backwards and then applying it to future cycles. Remember that the fertile window is five days ending on the expected day of ovulation. Remember that an OPK detects the LH surge, which is the day before ovulation. And so when BBT is rising, that is post ovulation. So you want to look back at at least the five days before then. Now, that can be really tough. And I used to have patients bring in these graph papers and it could be very frustrating. Again, irregular cycles, don't mess with it. If your cycles are regular, you can use it and it can be predictive for future cycles. This is where technology and apps or wearables, and studies have shown that wearables, even wrist wearables, have been effective in detecting a rise in your body temperature and even more sensitive than a thermometer usage because you can wear them constantly and they can really detect those early morning levels and it is more consistent. So then the app can tell you, and I have an Apple watch and my phone will tell me, hey, you're starting to enter into your fertile window now because it'll automatically calculate that five day window based on when your temperature has risen in prior cycles. So if you have regular cycles, technology can make this really great. And studies have evaluated this and shown that it's just as reliable for detecting the surge. Now, if you're trying to prevent pregnancy, it's a little more 
nuanced, right? Because you're only detecting it afterwards. So again, if you're trying to prevent pregnancy, you want to have very regular cycles and then you want to stop having intercourse for about a week before you see that temperature shift. After the temperature has risen, then you know it's safe to resume again because the egg has already been released and is passed. So it can be effective if you have very regular cycles and you're very diligent about tracking. Things to know that can mess up BBT, and this is one of the big things, is that it is so influenced by the world around you. So if you're breastfeeding, that can change your temperature. If you drink alcohol, if you have you know, a fever or if you're sick, if you didn't get as much sleep as you normally do, if you're stressed out, that can change your temperature. Shift work makes it really hard to detect BBT. Um, things like traveling to other time zones. And then of course, if you have medical conditions like thyroid disease, that can interfere, that can interfere with ovulation too. Or if you're older and potentially starting to enter into menopause, our temperature shift is different because our brain is making more FSH and LH overall. So then it becomes less reliable. I like basal body temperature because in premise it's easy and it can confirm things that you know. So if your cycles are regular and you think you know when you ovulate, it can be a nice way to confirm that you did in fact ovulate. I previously said it was essentially free because you just needed a thermometer. Some of these new wearable devices specifically for fertility tracking or temperature systems can be a little expensive. But if you already have things like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch that you use for other reasons, they have now integrated software and tracking algorithms that does make it essentially no more expensive. So I think that wearables have changed the game to make BBT more accessible. I see people who have irregular cycles come in extremely frustrated that their BBT is all over the place. So just don't even go there if your periods are irregular. If your periods are regular though, it can be a nice adjunct to knowing when your fertile window will be so you can try to get pregnant. I even did a study when I was a fellow looking at the different options for fertility awareness methods, looking at OPKs versus cervical mucus versus BBT. And at this time, most was a little bit before wearables, but they all had the same increase in pregnancy versus nothing. So using any type of method of fertility awareness is beneficial. No one method is better than the other. So OPKs are great if you like those. BBTs are fine if you like those. If you have reliable cervical mucus, great. So don't feel like you have to do them all. But if you're trying to get pregnant, being able to track and identify ovulation and target intercourse in that zone is going to help you get pregnant faster. Thank you guys so much. I hope this video was helpful. Ask any questions below. As always, you can follow along on Instagram at NatalieCrawfordMD, or you can listen to the As A Woman podcast. Thanks, friends.